Okay, and we are live. Hello, everyone. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Good afternoon, Joan. I found Dory. Hello, thanks for coming in. Okay, I'll wait a couple more minutes. How's everyone's weekend going? I'm going to be... Um, let me know if you can hear me. Just press a one. That would be awesome. This is going to be a tough. Uh, hey, Laverne. How are you? Sounds good. Thanks, John. Um, this is, you know, as we know, at Love Notes for TLC. She has a channel on YouTube and Facebook. Um, but she, her account has been suspended for at least one to two weeks on uh, YouTube for nudity, um, but she did post on her Facebook account. I not on Facebook, but I went in um, from a friend's Facebook to record it, download it, and um, I didn't know if I uploaded it to my own channel to play it, if it would cause an echo, so I ended up creating another account. Like, I'm still not that tech savvy when it comes to live streaming, but um, nonetheless, we're going we're gonna to play that recording of her talking to a police officer. I don't know if he's a detective or I think he's a sergeant. Um, and she does have a, an active warrant out for her arrest, and she's trying everything possible to avoid having, not wanting to turn herself in. So we're going to... I'm gonna watch that video and comment. And comments are welcome. Thank you, Tinia. Hi, Teresa Elvis. Hello. Thanks for coming, everyone. I'm usually not off on Saturdays. I work every single Saturday. I work uh, 17 hour shifts on Saturdays, but because I have so much accrued time, I didn't want to lose it, so I'm taking some time off from work. So it's great to be around for a weekend. Okay. All right. We're going to start this in about one minute. Hope everyone's doing well. Is anyone here not familiar with who Love Notes for TLC is? I'll give you a quick synopsis. She's a homeless, homeless, allegedly pregnant woman. Well, some days I think she's pregnant. Some days I don't. Some days I don't think she's homeless. Some days I do. So um, I have my theories, <laughs> depending on the day it is. Um, she's claimed to be homeless for two years, living in her vehicle. Um, she does not work. She collects disability, but what she says is PTSD. Um, and she's not one that as far as seeking out resources for her situation, I think once she finds one place that rejects her for whatever reason it is, she just gives up. Um, and she likes donations and she likes to smoke her weed. Yeah, she's six months pregnant, maybe almost going into her seven months. She's due, well, she's due, actually, no, she's due, she's in her, I think she's just in her six months, 26 weeks or 28. She's due September 4th. And she is not wanting it in the hospital. And this is a trigger warning. She does often say, make threats of harming her baby. I mean, harming it. Like her baby not being alive once it's born and having it in the woods. So she is disturbed. Cooking and listening. Oh, what you cooking? Hi, kindness cake. Thanks for coming. So um, other people have done uh, commentaries on this video. Um, so a lot of people are aware of her and a lot of people are concerned, believe it or not, as much as she pisses people off. You know, we don't want to see anything bad happen to Leticia, that is her name. Um, she will threaten to harm herself also or prostitute herself. Um, 
usually when she's looking for money, but you know, we can't always just assume that someone won't do anything. She's in a whirlwind of problems mentally. She's in trouble with the law now for filing a false rape report. And it's, she hasn't been charged and she's very confused. And we'll talk about that as I go through the video. Um, uh, she doesn't want to turn herself in. That's her day in court to defend herself, to get an attorney, a public offend, uh, defender. But and then I'm thinking, well, maybe she doesn't want to go in because she's got a fake pregnancy bump. I mean, my mind keeps going in a hundred directions. You know, maybe she's really not pregnant. And then maybe I'm like, well, then she'll lose her car because they'll impound it if she's in jail. But most likely she'll bond out. But let's let's start this and uh, get this going. Okay. Let me set this up. Okay. Marty shared it. Add to stream. Let me just check the YouTube side. Now, one part of the video in the middle of it, the volume is going to go really low. So it's not me. It's um. Okay. Let me make it full screen. I don't want to play on TV. Okay. All right, can you guys see the full screen? Spaghetti, yummy, I love pasta. She sounds in desperate state on many levels. I feel frightened for her. Yeah, kindness, I have the same feeling. She's she's confused. She's uh, She doesn't have the mental capacity to compartmentalize all these issues. And a lot of us go through that. It's called being overwhelmed, but she doesn't have the tools or the coping mechanisms or skills um, to cope. And regardless of all the therapy she's been in. Um, so let, let's start this. Now, this is her. I believe she reached out to the sergeant in Arkansas, in a town or city in Arkansas, because she has a warrant. She refers to it as a natural warrant, which I don't understand what that means. I've heard of natural resource officers that serve warrants. Um, but I don't know what a natural warrant is. I tried looking it up and I couldn't find anything. All I could find was um, a natural resource officer. Like if you have something out in your yard that's illegal, you know, they can seize it, that kind of warrant thing. Okay, let's go. And I will pause and talk. Let me know if, it's, if the volume's okay, if it's too loud, not loud enough. Okay, now let me say right here. Good. Oh, you can't hear it? No sound at all? I wonder why. Ah, hold on. 
Unmute. All right, it's not muted. Why can't you hear it? Hold on. Let me go back to StreamYard. Stop sharing for a second. All right, share. Whoops. Share screen. Oh, share audio. All right, let me see if this works now. Let me know if you hear this and I'll start it I over. I tried to go to the emergency room five days after the incident. And because of the overwhelming amount of people in the waiting room, I didn't want to sit and wait any longer. So I left before actually filing the, the report five days that? after the incident. And I figured Sorry. that okay. the men would just get their karma, the two men that were involved. Sorry about so, that. Who was this? You. Don't worry, this is Sergeant James Booth from the Bethlehem Police Department. Yes. I was following up with you, um, you yeah, know, you called to dispatch for yes. records. I um, wanted to speak with the detective about a warrant that you have. Yes, there's a warrant apparently out for my arrest for falsifying a rape report, Thank but you, that is just an allegation. So I was wondering what the status of that was. Because when I filed for rape on December 29th, they had told me that they were going to do their best to find the person. And then they turned around. I actually had to call your department and they notified me that I had allegedly falsified the rape report, which I had spoke to numerous people and they had asked me, well, wasn't there an investigation done since, you know, your doctor could even back, back up the fact that, you know, my gynecologist could back up the fact that it was indeed rape. I all right. First of all, um, they, the police or the court found probable cause. That doesn't mean she's guilty. They found probable cause. Probably either in her statement that she provided to the police, discrepancies, threats, whatever. They found probable cause that um, it could be falsified. And it is a crime. In fact, I will tell you what kind of a crime it is. A person who commits the offense of making a false report. No, this is in Arkansas. If he or she purposely makes a report containing a false allegation to law enforcement, knowing the allegation to be false, under the proposed bill, making a false report is a class A misdemeanor for a first offense in a class D felony for subsequent offenses. So I don't know if this is her first offense or not. Um, secondly, a gynecologist cannot determine or ha does not have the equipment, a rape kit, not to my knowledge, to determine that you've been raped. You have 72 hours within a rape to go to the emergency room to get a rape kit for DNA testing. I don't believe that any GYN office can afford it to even process these. Um, maybe they can, but I haven't heard Leticia talk about, yeah, my gynecologist provided a rape kit within three days, I believe she even went to the ER several, six days or five days after her alleged assault, uh, which is too late, at least for a rape kit. Um, so there must have been some discrepancies in her report, unless they reached out to her alleged assaulter, which we don't even know who the father of this baby, alleged baby is. Um, she slept with someone three days before, Jason, 
who she Jason she claims Jason to be the father. Um, she also claimed I don't know if anyone of you caught this that she was ovulating when she met these men, but yet she'll say later on she was on the last day of her menses. So can you get pregnant the day after or two days after your menses? You can get pregnant anytime during your cycle, anytime. Um, semen stays in the woman's body for up to five, five days. Um, so it's recommended that, you know, don't be sh you can get pregnant at any time during your menses. I mean, during your cycle. Okay. He tried to go to the emergency room five days after the incident. And because of the overwhelming Wait. amount of people in the waiting room, I didn't Wait. want to sit and wait any longer. So I left before actually filing the, the report five days after the incident. And I figured that the men would just get their karma, the two men that were involved in the circumstance that left me pregnant. Um, so now I'm six months pregnant, and I'm not sure I called your your department to see what the status of this was, because even when, when I had looked up online to see the the warrant, it does not state that I have an outstanding warrant in Benville, Arkansas. For anyone just coming in, she's on her cell phone talking to um, a sergeant, getting an update on her, her warrant that's been issued. So I wanted to see what the update was for this entire circumstance since I haven't seen the man since that day. I was around him for approximately 12 hours total. We didn't have a relationship. We weren't involved at all. Um, and when I met him, he had known that I was on collecting disability due to my post-traumatic stress disorder and mental, you know, distortions, as well as homeless for the last two years. So I just want to know why there would even be a, a you know, um, an alleged falsified report from my perspective because I've never done that prior. I This is the first time I've ever tried to, to clarify that these instances were rape because of the fact that we had conceived, you know. All right, she's trying to put in like big words or be grammatically correct. And I majored in English literature Leticia, you're a mess with your big, with your your fancy words you're trying to put in there. You're all over the place, you know. Um, and she's oftentimes not grammatically correct in how she uses these words. And you can tell she pauses and tries to think of, you know, some sophisticated sounding word or to act all intelligent. She's overcompensating because there was a child involved after that point when I when I had filed for the rape December 29th I had actually even told the father of the child you know when you don't know who the father of the child is Leticia because you've slept with multiple men okay you like Jason better because he's better looking um for whatever reason but she slept with, we, I at least know she slept with one other guy named Thomas because she's going to name her baby Thomas Jason Servian. And it's, I didn't record that part because it's really disturbing um, because she's basically punishing her baby, giving the reasons why she wants that baby to have that name. But we don't know who the father is. And that involves a paternity test. Once the child is when I found the baby, out the baby is born. They're not gonna do it some kind of amniocentesis and try to extract DNA while it's still in the uterus. No, she has to wait. The Department of Revenue can help her with that. She doesn't have to pay for a paternity test. The DOR will pay um, pay for it based on her income or lack thereof. I'm pregnant is there anything and there was no response so this is clearly rape and I'm not sure what you know what to do or say about this because now I'm nervous you can't see her whole face because when I recorded it um 
there was like Facebook up there and some title and no, unfortunately it's it's not your screen. It's how I recorded it. It's been six months. I have three months left and I have no home still. I've li been living out of my car for two years. Um, they knew that, these men involved. So I'm not sure what to say or do. And you haven't done anything, Leticia. And Leticia is welcome to come in here. I don't have her blocked. Um, she's welcome to come in here. Of course, we're all concerned for her. You know, has she said awful things? Yes. Does she need help? Yes. Um, are, is anyone bullying her? No. We're not. We're not. I think when someone becomes, it says things like wanting to kill her baby and whatnot. I mean, our reactions are, we get angry, you know. I've lost sleep um, at one point. But she she's the type that she expects everyone else to do for her. Um, so now she's got three months left and she's got nowhere to go. She's had at least um, five months from the time she found out she was pregnant to start looking for shelters or reach out to resources, go to the ER, ask for a social worker. Um, there's plenty of help out there, but she has Leticia's conditions, whether that's wanting to continue to smoke marijuana or just following people's rules, um, other people's rules, and that's life, so where to find or seek resources because every time I turn here and there, people apparently, because of this, because there is no actual report for the rape, don't want to believe that this was domestic violence due to That's not true. sexual yeah. abuse. You can walk into any rape crisis uh, center, okay, and talk to someone and they will not request proof. They will provide you resources. They're not there to prove if you were really raped or not. They're going to assume anyone that walks through their door and claims that they were assaulted, they're going to help them, okay? Okay, I just have a couple of questions for you. Yes. And when you're talking about uh, two men, what yeah. The first name was Thomas. He was in Jacksonville, Arkansas. And I only knew him, he was in the Air Force. I met him one evening. Uh, he said that I would be safe with him. He kept me up until 5 a.m. We played Monopoly. He forced himself on me. And that was the last day of my menses. So when I got up to use the restroom, I had a lot of discharge. So I presume it's probably not his child, although oh there were God. only, the incidences happened two days apart. That was it, December 2nd and December 4th. So. The incident that I tried to file, Jason Wallace, that's okay. the one I presume is the father. Uh, he's former military, I guess, or so I was told. But, and then I was also told by one of your detectives that the, um, no, Alma. that that had nothing to do with the, them filing or not, you know, it, his status in the military. But I. So I have another question for you. So Jason Wallace. So and then you talk about. So I didn't. I wasn't investigating. Also, it was Detective Andrew Corbett. Um, but he's out of town until I think Monday. Okay. But I think went out the other day, so I didn't get a chance to talk to you. So I may have to ask you a few more questions. And, um, when you say you were raped, what does rape mean to you? It means, it means different things to different people. It means that during the time with Jason Wallace, I was asleep. I was not able to consent. Nor, and you could see from all of the messages Listen prior to this. through the dating app as well as my phone, that we had, I had no intention of getting intimate with this person. I've been homeless for two years and I've been off birth control for six years. I was very cautious about not fornicating with random men. So I was asleep. He penetrated me. Then that initiated that initial rape. That's what I consider rape. Uh, because I had no time to consent. And even when he ejaculated all over my, my abdomen, he asked me, I was just waking up and he said, do you want a rag? And that's all I really remember clearly. Okay. Listen to that. I was just waking up. That's all I remember was him, you know, on her abdomen 
asking me if I wanted a rag. So how can you, she said it. If, if you, do you understand what I'm saying? I was asleep when I woke up. All I remember is him, you know, on my abdomen asking me if I wanted a rag. So how can you say that he penetrated you when you just said yourself, all I remember was waking up with his on my abdomen and asking me if I wanted a rag. That's my little bombshell right there. Alma, this is from her Facebook. She uploaded it, what, two days ago? Maybe yesterday? Yesterday, I think. Um, she suspended from YouTube for a week or two for nudity. Um, so she can't upload on YouTube. And everyone was very concerned because she wasn't posting anything on Facebook. Um, people who knew her personally, like by phone numbers, her, her calls were going right into voicemail as if her phone was shut off. So we didn't know if she was in a hospital, if she was in a jail you know, under police custody, but yesterday she did upload this to her Facebook page. So I find it really interesting that on one hand, she's claiming assault, but on the other hand, she just said, all I remember, let's listen to it again. homeless for two years and I've been off birth control for six years. I was very cautious about not fornicating with random men. So I was asleep. He penetrated me. Then that initiated that initial rape. That's what I consider rape uh, because I had no time to consent. And even when he ejaculated all over my, my abdomen, he asked me, I was just waking up and he said, do you want a rag? And that's all I really remember clearly. That's so, all I by the really time I remember awoke, clearly. That's all I remember. Okay. She doesn't say she remembers him penetrating. All she said was, that's all I really remember was him, you know, on my stomach, on my abdomen, and asking me if I wanted a rag to clean up. Yeah, Elmer, I agree. The next morning, I started crying, and he told me, in that moment, you're making me feel bad. So I said, if, if you feel bad, that's your own conscience talk talking to you. And I rolled over and fell asleep because I thought, since he's former military, he's probably going to get away with this. I'm very sad right now. This is very distorted. So by the time I woke up that following morning, I presumed that I was going to build up some integrity or some some dignity within myself and i decided i would ask him to have sex with me since he had already done it he'd already what? done the deed so by the, the second time i consented i know that that was consensual but honestly i don't do that stuff when i end up forced into doing it then i i have loose sort of um morals at that point i've already detached i've already been frustrated they're not loose morals, Leticia. Look, you know, the law doesn't like get into the psychology of all of this, all right? That's not their job. Their job is to enforce the law and that and to protect people. And for you to stay in that, this is why I mean she has no coping skills, okay? I can kind of see maybe if people detaching enough that they're like in denial. And then after the fact, they're like, oh, my God, he really did that, that to me. But the law doesn't look at it that way or under the, under the, under the crime of assault, the R word. OK, they're not like, oh, yeah, we've seen this happen all the time. OK, let's just go round him up and arrest him and throw him in prison. No, it doesn't work that way. So she's making excuses. Because as we all know, she kept in communication with Jason for a little bit. And when he rejected a relationship with her, that was when she filed the charges. She didn't go to the ER till six days after. She didn't stay. You have 72 hours to get a rape kit um, to be examined. 
so clearly to me it sounds like a woman scorned this is revenge and she clearly wants a husband in a house and the white picket fence you know she wants the happy life and i have to work at it i did you know um so that secondary time wouldn't have happened had he not penetrated me the first time because i know how to keep my integrity intact as a single woman that has been off of birth control for six years so um yeah and it's all documented through my gynecological records as well that i wasn't seeking to fornicate that that day i've got another question for you yes um, i was just kind of looking for the report you guys always have communications back and forth do you remember um telling him the communication that jason that he needed to be involved with you or if he wasn't she was going to if you were going to file a rape report against yeah you? i had already is. tried to initiate rape there it is she wrote in the report because she texted, had communications with Jason, that if he didn't um, accept a relationship with her, she would file rape charges. That's the probable cause right there for filing a false report. The five days afterward, okay? I told him, normally I don't have sex with people. This isn't okay. And I said, are you not going to do anything? Are you not going to respect me as being that, you know, because he forced himself on me the first time regardless of what I had said afterward, I still suffer from distortions as well because of my post-traumatic stress disorder of the complex kind. So why didn't anyone see it from my perspective? I had already been emotionally emotionally distraught from him having penetrated me without but my consent. Stayed. I, of course, I was going to be confused. I was going to be thoughtful in that manner of saying, well, maybe he just wanted to do it with me. Maybe this is just a one-time thing. Maybe I should give him the benefit of the doubt and give him the opportunity to correct this before I actually tell everyone, hey, guess what? Clearly, I was raped. So then, But yet, if he chose a relationship with you, you never would have filed a report. You see how that works, Leticia? You know, because he didn't give you what you wanted. You turned it around and you decided to cry rape because of your way of thinking, your distortion. So you're expecting the police, you know, to examine you on a, on a mental health level and say, yeah, that makes sense. No, it, it's the law is the law, you know, and you'll have your day in court. You know, you're innocent until proven guilty. So you can tell that to the judge. He can order maybe a psychological evaluation or Baker Act you, you know, but the actions that you did, you know, the courts aren't, it's a business. The law is a business. They're not about emotions. Well, how do you feel? No, no, no. That's for like victim impact statements at the end of a trial. It gives a victim a chance if, if you know, if they're found innocent or whatever, but no, they want facts, okay? They're not gonna take the time out with your mental health history, and hopefully a judge will give you that opportunity to be hospitalized and get the, the treatment, the mental health that you, that you really deserve. We all deserve that. No one should have to suffer like this, but your choices are not good choices, you know? Um, and you weren't responsible. You know, you just assume no man is going to touch you, you know. Provide a condom. Don't rely on guys to have condoms, you know. If you were, if you felt it was a rape, there's no reason why you shouldn't have gotten up and left. And left. But you had a plan. You executed a plan at that point. That What a great way that I can get a relationship with him. Because if I tell him, if you don't, I'm going to file a, a rape report, false report, and I'm going to have him. We're going to live happily ever after. No, Leticia, you're ruining this man's life. And it hasn't even been proven he's a father. And I didn't know. We didn't know I was pregnant. So then finally, a few weeks after that, I went in for some strange discharge. And Alma, she can be committed. There is involuntary. She can be Baker acted. Um, you know, the courts can um, stipulate her into um, a mental health facility. She will be evaluated by psychiatrists first that, that the courts hire. Um, and then, you know, she would have, you know, 
she still has the right to due process. Um, but the psychiatrist also evaluates and tells the judge, you know, what his findings are. Um, and then the judge determines, um, you know, if she should be committed involuntarily. Found out that I was pregnant and now all of a sudden I'm six months along and they're still not correcting this issue. They're still looking at it as if I was seeking this out when in actuality, I have three months left to find a suitable housing for this child or it's going to be taking, taken from me. So I... Why aren't you telling the police officer that once this child is born that you've threatened to harm it? So now you're saying, you know, it's going to be taken from you. You've been telling us all, you know, no one is going to take this baby from me unless I'm dead and the baby is dead. Those are your exact words, Leticia. No one is going to take this baby from me unless I'm dead or the baby is dead. Um, yeah, Alma, you can, um, if a person is, if you think a person is a danger to themselves or others, you can certainly go to a courthouse. We call it here section 5150 and ask the judge to have your loved one um, committed um, for a mental health evaluation. And again, they're, they're evaluated by a psychiatrist. Um, you can do it if you have a loved one struggling with substance abuse, if, if addiction is, is doing harm to yourself. Um, so they're often also given to people who are struggling with substance abuse um, and they're stipulated into rehabilitation. So I think it's for like 72 hours, but the, um, and you don't have to have the loved one there either. Um, there are situations where, you know, they have to go look for that person and sometimes they can't find the person or, so I think these 5150s are good for so many days a week, depending on, on your county. Um, but the person doesn't have to be in court either. I don't understand why. So let me explain to you how the warrant process works. Right. So once the warrant's issued, right, you, you just need to take care of it. So are you able to drive at all? Uh, yes, that's where I live. I live in my vehicle. I have for two years okay. now. Are you able to drive to Bendel, Arkansas? Because you could just turn yourself in, and no, I don't know what the problem would be or anything like that. But um, Why would I do that when in actuality they didn't do that to the actual rapist? I didn't see warrant. that there was a, a warrant issued for his arrest. I didn't see that he carried out time. So now why are they... Why are they... they did not file that case. Um, okay. So all of a sudden now I, I've allegedly falsified a rape report and they want to make sure that I... I. This is Leticia's definition of a speedy trial. Okay? Just arrest Jason and throw him in prison for like 10 to 30 years. That's her... This is her definition. This is what she thinks she's going to get some speedy trial when she doesn't realize this is the, the process. You know, you're charged with a, a misdemeanor. Okay? You have due process. You go in front of the judge. He reads the charge. He'll ask you if you have your own attorney or would you like one appointed to you? They might not even hold her. They might release her on personal recognizance. Okay. Um, you know, if she says, hey, I've got no money. I'm homeless. More than likely, the judge is going to release her on PR, personal recognizance. Um, so, you know, she might be out that same day, that same day, but she, I don't, she does, uh, I know she doesn't understand the process. Serve my time, which makes no sense. I'm pregnant. I'm already going through enough stress. I, I only filed because of the fact that I was pregnant, because normally I let men get away with this kind of shit. I have my entire life. That's why I was abused by my father and brother growing up. And nobody filed the report oh. when I went, went in when I was 18 years old. So I don't understand 
why this continually happens to me. Nobody actually believes my perception. And I'm not sure if it's because I have a heightened vocabulary. If people presume that I'm trying you to manipulate the situations when in actuality, no, I've been in therapy off and on since I was 12 years old. I know the differences. I'm not making up any allegations. This is clearly rape. He has not contacted me in the uh, whatsoever. The only notification I received after I actually filed and everything, after we found out that I was pregnant, because apparently he was getting my messages. For months, he was receiving my messages, and I started harassing him. Right, I didn't know if he was getting any of them. Perception. And he, he messaged me back on March 9th, stating, don't contact me. There's a warrant out for your arrest. I get uh, Clearly, you want to have that child in prison. Because he was going to file for harassing communications against me. As he should have. So, did. does this any of this sound normal to you? Does any of this sound, you know, kosher in your perspective? Because that seems a little off. I know very little. Uh, I don't know both sides of the story. I can just kind of read a little bit out of a couple of different narratives. So, right. I wouldn't want to speculate, but I'm just here to help you out on the warrant, right? So, the easiest thing to do is just come turn yourself in. Why, Honestly, why would I want to serve? Really baby, right? Why would I want to serve a warrant when I know clearly I'm not in the wrong for it? <sighs> I know clearly. We all know clearly, due to the fact that I've been alone and keeping to myself and continually traumatized. Yet thereafter, I went to my doctor's appointments, but now I'm refusing to because I realize that the system is not out to help me as an individual. They're out to hurt me. So you're gonna make your baby suffer and not go to your your monthly OB checks because you're pissed off. Make that make sense, Leticia. You know, make that make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't. Because I'm technically a disabled homeless citizen. So they wouldn't want to place efforts into an individual like me because I obviously don't make efforts into paying taxes in a local community. Leticia is not immune from doesn't isn't granted immunity just because she's homeless or in co collecting disability i worked in a jail and i worked in the prison system we have many homeless people especially in the jail it's transient people are booked in they're booked out they're there for under two years sometimes they're there for a day if they bail out okay a lot of homeless people break the law break the law. And yeah, it sucks, but the law is the law. You're not excluded because you're homeless. So, you know, trying to get someone to make you feel bad um, is not going to work. It's not going to work. So I don't understand why I would have to serve time, more trauma to me, more trauma to the child inside of me that I'm going to have to relinquish anyway upon, um, Listen, you know, expelling it from Expel my own. Okay. Expelling. When she said that word, all I could think was of a coffin birth. Like when a woman is deceased and she's pregnant, the body automatically will, will expel the fetus. <laughs> what about when I give birth, when I'm in labor, but you see how she's so disassociated from that baby. And she referred to that baby as it. It, not my son. Most times it's it, you know, or the baby, it, it. And she, I believe she says it to this officer too. She refers to her son that she's carrying as it. So, you know, this word, you know, here's one of her another attempts to try to come off as smart using the word expel. All right. That's gross. My body. So I, I'm not sure why I would want to serve that. Why? And then when I called you to make a, an, like a, an appointment to speak with an attorney about this, they stated that I had to go in and they had mm -hmm. to actually issue the warrant which then they would grab me up at that moment. Um, how does that make any sense to you? 
Do you think that if it were you in this circumstance, clearly you had no one to turn to, no family, no friends, you've been living out of your car, you know, you kept to yourself for two years. Would you want to turn yourself in? Would that would that make you feel good? Would that make you feel like clearly the world around you cares for you? Yes, I, I would turn myself in if I had a warrant. But if the warrant, of course, was an allegation. She's trying so hard. So if you if you were well, getting placed every, every charge in Arkansas, no one is guilty when they're arrested. Um, they just had probable cause to arrest them, probable cause to charge them for something. Just right. because you're being charged with something and arrested on a warrant, um, an issue citation, or however they handle that warrant, that would mean you're guilty, right? You're not guilty until you're found guilty by a judge or a jury, right? So, or a jury, right? So, that's all we're saying when we issue a warrant. It's not saying that you're guilty. It's just saying that there was probable cause to charge you with this offense, which is filing a false police report. So you believe that it's 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 clearly in your right to enforce the will upon a pregnant woman, but you don't enforce the will upon a rapist because you didn't do this to him. You didn't you didn't you know offer a warrant for his arrest so that he could serve time so that he could think about what he's done. No, I have to think about getting impregnated. That's what you're doing. You have to sit me out, give me a time out to to realize I should have never shown up at that location and trusted this man. Probably because not. Because I have all the proof of all the documents stating, are you sure it's going to be safe for me? I don't want, you know, like, we're not going to have sex. Yes, I read your profile. We're not going to have sex with each other. Really? Okay, cool. Leticia, your behavior is so careless and promiscuous that, you know, you just think that these men... You know, yeah, some men are dogs, but when you put yourself in a situation where you lay in a man's bed, okay, um, you know, you're taking a risk. You're taking a risk. And he very well could have penetrated you without your consent. But again, at that point, you should have gotten up and left and went right to the hospital or called the police, period. Period. That's how it works. And you don't have the coping skills or the tools to process this stuff. Or maybe you do and you're just a vengeful, evil person. I mean, my, my left and right side of my brain really fight with that. You know, well, she's mentally ill. And then the other side of my brain is like, no, pink, she's evil. Like, she's narcissistic. She's a psychopath. And... But then my other side of the brain flips and it's like, well, I kind of do believe that she was harmed as a child. Um, but at some point she has to help herself. She has to help and she can't sit the rest of her life and blame the whole wide world. Because a lot of people have gone through what she's gone through and you got to seek help. You got to work hard at it. And then he fucked me in the middle of the night. Ugh. So... I don't understand it. Again, I really don't understand it. For again, early in the video, she said, the only thing I remember is when I woke up, there was his, you know what, on my abdomen, and he asked me for a rag. So you are assuming he penetrated you. Because the only thing, according to you, you said it. I was asleep. The only thing I remember when I woke up was him offering me a rag for my abdomen. From my perspective, someone that is suffering from a copious amounts of trauma and has her entire life, and I'm trying to relay this as, as eloquently as possible and as accurately as possible so that other, the other people understand that this is just more stress upon the fetus and worse off right for the right. mother really as well that. when she's got you know, warrants placed on these records, placed on these falsified allegations toward her, and then in it, and then it, she's seeking help, and she can't because she's got all these copious amount of records stating otherwise, stating that she has offended people. You're not going to talk this cop out of getting rid of your warrant, and warrants don't expire. They don't expire, Leticia. Are you going to run? or not run, drive the rest of your life away from a warrant 
And it's not going to look good that, you know, you're refusing to turn yourself in. It's not going to look good on the, for the judge to know that you've been avoiding a warrant, that you've had a conversation with the police, and you're saying, oh, not doing it, not doing it. So you're disobeying the law again and again and again. Offended those individuals and needed to be placed. I think you should bring it to us and bring it to our attention and come up here when you take care of the law and talk about it. Isn't, um, isn't the only advice I can give you right now. I, I don't think there's anything else that I can do for you. Is, is there anything else? Um, Watch well, your face. I mean, what, ev what evidence aside from, like, I told them my gynecological records, Aside from that, what what else proof do you need to to turn this That's around and place proof, the Leticia. efforts toward toward the real criminal in this circumstance? I mean, what what do you need from me? My blood, sweat, and tears. She I, went I, to I, the she went to the emergency room like six days later, and because it was busy, she she left. She left, and she went to her gynecologist, and. She could have said to a gynecologist, I was raped. And in the doctor's notes, they'll write per patient. Your patient states, quote, I was raped, end quote. Okay. But a, a, a gynecologist, obstetrician, doesn't have the equipment or means to forensically to determine if you were assaulted. Even if you had some injury to that area, it doesn't mean it was an uh, intentional assault. People do have rough, rough sex and, um, you know, you can get torn, you know. So you, you can't just go to an OB or GYN and say, you know. You need to put in my record I was raped and that's the proof right there. No, that's not how it works. I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be facetious. I mean I am, yes. I'm not trying to make it yes, too humorous because I know I make people laugh about this stuff because it's true. You know, it, it's it's uh it's horrifyingly um you know, dark humor in that way. How could this even be happening to me? All you had to say it's dark humor. You don't need to add horrifying because that's what dark humor is. Um, all I was clearly trying to do was r regulate the situation, understanding he had clearly raped me and understanding that I was stupid in, in giving him the benefit of the doubt at any point. So now I'm trying to hold back tears and in, in discussing this to you and telling you that clearly I, I'm scared. I don't want to go to your Benville. You're scared because they've got proof probable cause because you texted it and I take it Jason shared those texts or you wrote it in your statement that if you didn't commit to a relationship with you, you would file rape charges against him. Do you understand at all how that looks? It's like blackmail. It is blackmail and it's a serious, um, allegation to make against anybody it's very serious rape is a very serious serious charge you know and and i know i'm 34 years old but being that i suffered through sexual trauma growing up it's difficult for me to convey my emotions without letting them fly off the handle at times. Yeah, she's very scared. Well, I'm, I'm sorry that happened to you. And it is scary. the fact is, is, is you have that warrant and there's nothing that can be done until it's taken care of, right? You have to take care of that warrant. Yep. Whether it's tomorrow or two weeks, two months. I mean, it's going to be out there, right? All right, this is where it gets quiet. Let me turn it up. This is very hard to hear, and this is as far as my volume goes up. No, I live in my vehicle, and I've been traveling through the U.S. Look at her face. If looks Missouri. could kill, I'm Missouri. dead. He's asking her where she lives right now. She says Missouri. Missouri, it's illegal for recreational marijuana. 
there's no way she's in Missouri. And there's no way she would tell a cop where she's at, even what state. Because they might put out the bolo, be on the lookout. I don't know. But warrants around here, they, don't, they really don't put effort into like finding a person unless it's like for murder or something. But um, it's if she were to get pulled over, they run her plate and they're like, oh, she's got a warrant. Um, but I don't believe for one minute she's in a state that doesn't have recreational dispensaries because she likes her weed. Look at her face. As in? As in what type of help, help are you relaying, re referencing? It sounds like you need some legal aid, right? Or at least need an attorney. And how would I have no finances for it? He's telling her that How she probably needs legal aid. Do you not realize I'm living out of my vehicle? But I tried to get that in Bentonville, and they told me that I had to have an actual warrant served first. So that doesn't make any sense. Why would I want to serve a warrant that makes no sense to me? Why would I want to serve a warrant that is inaccurate? And I would understand if these things were actually true. But a majority of the time, I get messed over. This is where my brain thinks she's not pregnant. Okay? This is when I start thinking, is she, because she looks different standing up. She sits down, her whole, her belly kind of like flattens a bit. I know when I was pregnant with my three children separate, my belly stayed the same whether I was standing or sitting. And then I'm thinking, and a lot of people thinking the same too, does she wear a pregnancy bump? You know, the one that belts around. And if she were to go turn herself in, she would be processed. She'd have to be subjected to a strip search. That's just with all people who are processed, you know, or change into her jail scrubs and they would see a pregnancy belt. That's one theory I have in my head. Because I'm like, I know she's scared, but at the same time, it's like, get it over with, Leticia. That's your day in court. You want everyone to listen to your story. Why would it be any different that you have the chance to go in front of the judge, you know, and say, this is what happened to me? Like what happened in my ex-husband's case and everything, um, which you don't understand, you know, you wouldn't know unless you re did the research on me. And understanding that he got one over on me, clearly, not one, but many times. Um, the cop can't do anything kind of about your life, unfortunately. Openly and honestly and accurately through social media now because none of this makes any sense. None of it. I don't understand why, as the victim, I don't actually get the appropriate amount of help that I should. Because you refuse it. I think the best thing that you can do is just come turn yourself into the Netflix department and maybe we can talk about it a little further. But I'm frightened to. I don't know what lies beyond that. What type of charges I'm going to be forced to have to face and how much money I'm going to have to... And I understand that, but I don't have the money to bond myself out, and I don't have any individuals that would bond me out, and I don't want to sit in jail, so they can starve me again. Well, um, I, I don't know what your bond's going to be right until you see a judge or you want something else. She wants an answer. She wants, like, hit this cop to, like, predict her future. Here comes the face. Why do I want to laugh hysterically about that? I don't find this humorous at, in, at all. It's not humorous. I feel as though it, it doesn't give me any clear answers. As a victim, I'm the one that's being, you know, charged with all these things. And I'm like, I don't understand it. I'm just trying to comply. I'm trying to go along with it. But it's very frightening. And knowing that there's not going to be any rainbow at the end is it, frustrating. But you can kind of see how. There's the face. There's the face. Who is this? Oh, shoot. What did I do? Oh, sorry. Oh, where was I?
it's this is the efforts right. toward toward the real criminal in this circumstance. Missouri. Why would I want to serve a warrant that is inaccurate? And I would understand if these things were actually true. But a majority of the time I get messed over, like what happened in my ex-husband's case and everything, um, which you don't understand, you know, you would, as the victim, I don't actually get the appropriate amount of help that I should. Okay, here we go. Did you refuse any, all help? But I'm frightened to. I don't know what lies beyond that. Is she imitating a puppy or a dog when they cock their head? What type of charges I'm going to be forced to have to face and how much money I'm going to have to. And I understand that, but I don't have the money to bond myself out and I don't have any individuals that would bond me out and I don't want to sit in jail so they can starve me again. You won't starve, Leticia. He said he doesn't know that what will happen once she turns herself in. It depends on the judge. It depends on a lot of things. Why do I want to laugh hysterically about that? I don't find this humorous at, in, at all. It's not humorous. I feel as though it, it doesn't give me any clear answers. As a victim, I'm the one that's being you know, charged with all of these things. And I'm like, I don't understand it. I'm just trying to comply. I'm trying to go along with it, but it's very frightening. And knowing that there's not gonna be any rainbow at the end, it, it's frustrating. But you can kind of see how it looks on probably Facebook when you file a rape report, but then you find conversations. Oh my God, look at the fist. Leticia, you in the wrong. If a woman is confused and she knows he's not going to get in trouble in the first place, that's why I didn't file. But then when there was a baby involved, I had to file for everyone in these circumstances. That's not okay to just let a man get away with it. Oh, so you were only going to file once you found out you were pregnant. Okay, well, that says a lot as far as being a strong woman and. You know, you don't have to become pregnant to file a sexual assault. That's another bullshit thing that she's doing. So if she didn't get pregnant, she'd be like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You just want someone to take care of you and that baby. That's the bottom line to provide the house. You've said it a million times. And she's expecting this cop to take out his crystal ball and tell her what's going to happen at court. It's scary for anyone that has to go through that process. It's scary. But Leticia, you kind of did this yourself as far as what you wrote down in the report when you filed. All right. You put it right out there that if this guy didn't accept you and or the baby, that you would file rape charges against him. Right then and there, they have probable cause. To let him get away with murder? Knowing clearly that I was going to have mental distortions due to it? No, he's, he's protecting himself in his life, in his future, from people like you, okay, who just go around and think they can file a false police report, okay? And like I said, if you really felt it was sexual assault, you didn't get up, all right? That, you didn't leave. You consented to have more relations with him the next morning, and you said you enjoyed it. So you have to look at yourself and your actions and understand why people have a hard time understanding, you know, your way of thinking and processing things. And if it's that's an indication right there that you need some help. You know, you just think the whole world is messed up and they don't think your way. So, you know, I'm not going to bother getting help. You're so distorted in your mind. You truly like, uh, 
you need help. You need help. You made a mistake. You did when you filed that report and what you, what you said in that report. And people make mistakes, so learn from it. Learn from it. It's a misdemeanor. You'll probably get a fine. I doubt you'll be getting jail time if it's your first offense. It's a misdemeanor. If it's your second offense, it's a felony, Leticia. It's a felony. So you've been in jail. She was in jail before, but I don't know what for. Oh, disturbing the peace at her ex-husband's house. And as far as she's going to start talking about how she didn't eat for four days in jail, they didn't feed her because she's vegan. Well, they have peanut butter, they have bread, and they have salad. They have lettuce. You like lettuce, Leticia. They'll give you a head of lettuce. That's why I refrained from having sex. So when he forced himself on me, he should have done something. And if you don't have any statutes in place for that to to hold a man to his, you know, integrity, to hold a man to... You're ruining his that. integrity. Then why would you do it to the You're woman? destroying Especially it. Especially while pregnant. We Especially don't even know if he's the father. Hormonal. Especially while she's hormonal. No, you've been very helpful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. These people are clearly deranged. Clearly. I did not seek out to hurt anybody in this circumstance, but then I'm still hurt by it. How do they not see that I didn't want to file anything because I don't care. He was going to get his karma regardless for hurting me. Everyone does, but that's not okay. The fact that I have to sit out and they're going to starve me because I'm vegan. It took them four days to give me food the last time I was in no, jail. No, it's easier. I'm a five days stay. I fucking, I don't understand this. And then they're like, oh, well, we'll treat you better. We'll give you two mats. I don't want to be in jail. I'm not one of those fucking trash ass people that do fucking shit. They especially don't get caught by it. What the fuck? That is not okay. Like, I would place myself in jeopardy like that, knowing you people are sick. That's why I do these videos. That's why I fucking... Letitia, when she says she would never put her herself into that kind of jeopardy, that's the whole issue. Her actions are, are, are considered normal to her. And it's not. It's very disturbing. And, you know, how she presented this police report by actually putting in, if you don't take care of me, I'm filing rape on you. Um, you know, the, the, the law doesn't look at it uh, from a mental health perspective. That's not their job. But the best thing for her is to turn herself in. And I'll tell you why. And first of all, to get the monkey off your back, get the warrant off your back. Instead of hiding from the law, I mean, that's stress. Okay. Um, it's due process. You're not serving a warrant under the conditions of guilt. Okay. It's probable cause. You'll have your day in court. And again, when you speak to the judge, the best case scenario is that they will provide you an evaluation with a psychiatrist a mental health provider, which is what you need. You've just got to take that leap of faith, Leticia. You've got to take that leap of faith. You don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You can't just drive around for the rest of your life. This baby's coming in three months if it, there is a baby, okay? You're going to get into more trouble. You've waited all this time to do nothing, to try to get housing, to try to get into a shelter because they don't follow your rules. You know, you've got to make sacrifices and you will have that child taken from you if you have it in a hospital, but then there is, is she going to have it in the woods and is she going to hurt it? You know, and people have called the police. Many people have called to say, hey, she's threatening to harm her baby, but nothing's done. So this is the best case scenario. She's got to turn herself in or hopefully she'll get pulled over for a traffic stop or 
you know, cops run plates. Um, even though, and I think Roger um, Brown talked about this yesterday in his live stream that cops aren't supposed to run plates before they pull you over, but they do. Um, but hopefully she'll get pulled over and they'll run her plates and see that she's got a warrant and wherever she's at, she'll be extradited. Share this shit because you people are sick. Today is June 10th, 2022. I am 28 weeks along today. <laughs> And it makes no sense. None of this makes any sense. I'm very angry. I'm very frustrated. Like, you understand why I have to put this on film, right? You have you have to understand. This makes no sense. Leticia, if you were my daughter, <clears throat> well, if you were my daughter, I would tell you the same. Turn yourself in. It's scary. I know that the unknown is scary. And then we allow fear into our brain and then we think the worst and then we get anxious and it's just a whole mess. Okay. So it's like that precipitory anxiety, that fear of the unknown. But the best thing you can do is turn yourself in. There's no other way out of this. There isn't. There just isn't. And I have a feeling what you're thinking is worse than what will actually happen to you, okay? Because you're allowing fear, you know, that warrior keyboard in your head to take over, you know, that unknown, your imagination. And we all have that, you know, when we don't know the future or what's gonna happen. We think, I think the worst, you know, I always think of the glass half empty instead of half full. You know, but that's human. That's our human nature. So you're not going to, you're just not going to get out of this. You have to see it. What you're doing to me. Obviously, I didn't want shit from him afterward. And then I told him five days afterward, like, you're not even going to say anything about that. Like, you're just going to rape me and just wander off. Like, that's clearly not okay. And then I went in to try to do the rape fucking kit and shit. And no. And then because I didn't do it then. And I was like, oh, whatever, because I saw that man in full fucking military uniform. So I thought, okay, fine, whatever. They get away with this shit anyway. And then I have a baby out of it. Oh, no, we're not. And everybody's like, oh, congratulations. No. Fucking shut the fuck up. I have three fucking months left. If there's no place to have this kid, Good and if there's warning. no father... I sure as fuck am not going to support a child that is not fucking worth my efforts if it's not worth the father's efforts. Fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. Clearly it's something is fucking wrong. And you're going to tell me I have to serve a warrant that doesn't even exist yet because you have to hand it to me first. And then once you hand it to me, then it's like free game. Like, there you go. We're going to lock you up. It's not funny. It's not funny that you manipulate hey, people's hello, lives. Charlie. It's not funny that you grab us up like that. It's not funny. My... Um, you know, my child hurts right now. I, I feel him hurting. Like he moves around. It's Look, at, I'm sorry, but the more the baby grows, the more you're going to feel it moving around. They start getting a little cramped in there. And I don't think your baby is in the pain that you think it's in. Okay. Certainly a baby can absorb the stress hormones and stuff, but I don't think that baby is in actual pain. Okay. Your baby's comfortable. He's growing. He's getting larger and he's moving around and it is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable for the mom too, for any of us who've had pregnancies. And sometimes it's freaky. You know, you see your whole belly, like a wave, like the baby does a somersault inside of you and it's like, whoa, and it can be painful but it doesn't mean your baby is suffering the wrath of, you know, your baby's innocent, you know? Hey, Judith, the sad thing, the poor baby's already stressing out because of her. Yeah, but the way she describes it, because the baby, I can feel it moving around like it's in pain. No, that's what babies do when they're growing and getting bigger. You know, they have less room to move. So you, you're going to feel it too. She's been pregnant before, right? Let it go. Yeah, she's been pregnant before. So what's, 
you know, she didn't go through this with her first pregnancy. Has Pink, has anyone contacted the authorities yet? Yes, they have. Many people have. And I am not ashamed to say I have as a mandated reporter. When she started threatening herself and the baby, when she wanted to jump off the third uh, floor mall, um, I was very concerned. I was very concerned. And I was losing sleep. Like, And I wasn't telling anyone on YouTube either. Like she came up in my recommendation. I'm like, oh my God, like, I'm just not gonna watch her. But then when I found out she was pregnant, I'm like, I couldn't, I could not watch her because my fear was that she was gonna go through with her threats. But the police, they followed up with me. They said to me, when they approached her, they asked her if she, was going to harm herself and she denied it and she acted all like normal and yes officer and um and they couldn't do anything but see something say something forget it i'm so sick of hearing that oh if you see something say something do you know how many people have have called and they do nothing they do nothing it's discouraging, you know? Shift, it's uncomfortable. I know he's in pain due to your stupidity. So and why does it matter? I'm just a homeless girl. I'm just disabled. No one cares about my story. That's, That's it. That was it. No one cares about my story. So that was the end of that. Um, Okay. All right. What do you think? So I don't have a Facebook, Hello Starlight, but um, I can go on someone's Facebook and look her up. It is public. She's under what? Leticia Servin, right? Her ex had custody of the daughter. Yeah. Well, I, you know, as other people did also reach out. I can sleep a little better at night knowing that I am other people. We did what was we felt was necessary, you know, and um, there's no need to call the police anymore. They're very well aware. They're very well aware of what's going on. What mental distortion means, <laughs> right, Joan? I have no idea what Leticia's idea of mental distortions. She's, her vocabulary is awful. She doxed her daughter the other day, gave her full name, date of birth, address. Yeah, that was about a month ago, let it go. Yeah. Yep, she doxed her daughter in her school, her daughter's school. Yeah, Teresa, I tried to do what was right. And as a, especially as a mandated reporter, um, you know, we... I couldn't, I wasn't comfortable. Well, I'll just forget about it. You know, it's not my problem. You know, uh, the fact that I know what she's saying and doing, and if something were to happen, um, and if I was ever questioned, why didn't I say something? Because I am a mandated reporter. I didn't want to get involved in that crap. Yeah, so I'll drop the link if anyone wants to come up and discuss this, um, what your thoughts are. I'm reading chat invite. Okay, copy. Uh, paste. Here's the link. Uh -huh. This isn't my laptop, so forgive me. Okay. All right, there's the link if someone wants to come up. Um, this has got to come to a head, you know, and I'm hoping it comes to a head before she gives birth.
because then we could all be rest assured that she's under some kind of supervision for the sake of that baby. Um, how do we know if this is real? Hold on, Dory, or just some play or show for her. Well, Joan, right? That's like my left and right side brain. Like one side of my brain one day is like, nah, this is, she's faking it. She doesn't want to turn herself in because she's using a pregnancy fake baby bump, right? She'll be charged with the biggest scam, like collecting donos and telling people she's pregnant, doing this to, to these guys, to Jason. I mean, she zones in on Jason, not the other guy. Okay, because she thinks she can tell which guy impregnated her. She could have been impregnated by someone before the both of them with her history of just going, meeting these men and being very promiscuous. I mean, or just thinking that you can show up, not in a public place, stay in a guy's bed and just think, hey, you know, my rules and, you know, and I'm sure Leticia has participated in consensual sex a lot. And I, that's one thing of, of unfortunately, children who, or people who are assaulted as young kids, some of them end up being very promiscuous. Some don't, so. All right, Tori, hold on. Hello, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon to Almost you. evening. Uh, it's still afternoon here. How are you? The clock. Pretty good. Making spaghetti and stuff like that. So nice, nice. So what do you what do you think? I I was thinking a lot about what how much of this is mental illness or PS. What is it? PS. TV BPD or delusions. or pure evil could could be delusions of grandeur, you know, right? Right or narcissism. There could be a whole umbrella of things she is. Yeah, and is she just using her mental health diagnosis as an excuse? Which a lot of us do see. You know, the quote unquote protective class. You know, yeah. okay. I, I just kind of. I kind of wonder if she's even had sex at all. That was the other question that came up in my brain because how she described the incidents, there may have never been any kind of exactly right when she ever. said what I when, then, when she said to the officer what I remember was him you know on my abdomen offering me a rag. He could have very well not penetrated her because she said it to him. Right, and then I, I was then asleep her saying when I woke up. This she, is what I remember. Sorry, and then she, when she said that the very next day she offered it to him, mm -hmm. she could have gotten rejected, and maybe in her mind, from her past experiences in life, she feels that being rejected that way is being unloved. So she wants people to think that she's lovable at least, at least lovable. She might be so disturbed by the fact that she could be rejected that, it, you know, there's like a lot more to this story that we just don't know what's going on in her head. And if she's got like anything like schizophrenia, schizoaffective mm -hmm. disorder, mm -hmm. you know, she has a lot of traits and maybe she's never been diagnosed. It's possible. Yeah, I don't know what her, her history is or if she was on... I know she said she was on meds before because she was in a psychiatric hospital. Right, but they, not have, meds, but they they may not have diagnosed her properly. We don't know what her diagnosis is. She might have, she might have bipolar. She might, which wouldn't cause all of this. So, but schizoaffective disorder. She has a lot of the things that people with that disorder have. Like she's confusing the fact that. The, there's a warrant with it should have expired. Now that's how a, uh, someone with schizophrenia would think about it. They go, well, all I have to do, because I know I really didn't do anything wrong, it will just expire, it, just, it will go away. They, 
And then if it right. doesn't, then I'll just use other things. Like I'll use my mental illness or I'll use, but no, it doesn't work that way anymore. Back in the olden days, maybe you could have gotten away with some of the stuff she's doing, but they don't allow that anymore in the courts. They're like, okay, she's lucid most of the time. So, you know, she's right. If they deem her and, and there'll be a psychiatrist to evaluate her, I'm sure when she turns herself in, Right. Will right. either deem her competent or incompetent. And hopefully if he feels she's incompetent, then he'll, they'll stipulate her into mental health treatment hospital. Um, and, they'll and, take then, baby. Huh? And, and they'll take her baby. So if there is a baby, that is, right. and oh my God, if there isn't right? a baby, like this is going to be the longest troll in history. Because I'm like, uh, that's my she's thought. Really like, only that's herself. why she's scared. There's something else going on. Like, can you be yeah. this scared? Is she that unintelligent? That well, not not if she's um, got schizophrenia. It's not about intelligence. It's about how she views the world and how it works in her mind. But I look at her sometimes as she knows what she's doing, and if this is a fake pregnancy. She's a she, she's yeah, in no, more not, trouble. I'm in more trouble. Not not getting checked and fi you know finding out that she's not even pregnant would be the worst thing that could happen to her. I think she's af more afraid of that than actually going to jail. But because in in jail, if she has a mental illness, they will put her in solitary, so she won't have to deal with people. That's their biggest fear: people with schizophrenia is having to deal with you know, people, they, mm -hmm. they don't, because when they look at people, they don't know what they're doing. They, they jail, don't. Yeah. They jail for, for people with severe mental health issues. Jail is not the, I, it's I, not I the place. That. They lock you in solitary and they forget about you. Yeah. Uh, I know that. You're preaching to the choir here. I yeah, do I worked, that. I worked, I worked in the hole, you know, not every day, but there were days I was assigned to the hole and right. It's it's horrible. It's sad. It's extremely sad. So, I mean, yeah. if she does have a severe mental illness, jail would be a big fear because she would basically be completely isolated. But on the other hand, she doesn't want to be around people. So, so what? You know what I mean? It's the psychiatric unit would be worse for her in her head. She she they don't want to be diagnosed. She, that's why she always says she's very vague about what her diagnosis is. You see, she doesn't actually say what it is. But if she I thought she mentioned once bipolar, I could have sworn she mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, but you know, people with schizophrenia also have bipolar, they have psychosis, they have paranoia, they have all of the things. So, but this she, just shows that people who have mental illness, you know, we, I've seen her a lot on YouTube that, you know, um, don't bother that person, you know, they have mental illness. When that person is like a Leticia, well, maybe not as bad, but, you know, bad behaviors. In the real world, you're held accountable. You're still held accountable for your behaviors. Right. You know, but it's a whole process. She still has to turn herself in. You know, um, they're not going to say, well, because you went through all of this as a child, all this trauma, we're just going to tear this warrant up. No, it just doesn't work that way. Like you said, oops, this is echoing, sorry. Like you said, when um, when people have mental illness, Hi, Alex. they... Yeah. Um, the authorities know, or the cops or whatever, they know that this person is going to be a handful already. So as long as they're not doing harm to themselves or others, they will not take them in because they would prefer her to live in her car for the next 10 years without any baby, because there's no, probably not going to be a baby. If there is, then they will deal with it then. But otherwise, 
they don't want to have to take care of her because it's, she's going to be. When are they going to deal with it? When when she goes through with a threat against her baby? Like, that's my, I think that's, that's everyone's true. biggest they're fear. Right. They might look at her and see that there's no baby. We just don't know that. Do, so when are we going to know it? When, we, when they find a baby in the dumpster? Is that when no, we're going to no, find out? No, listen to me, think. The cops might look at her and realize that it's a fake pregnancy. They might be able to see that it is. But they don't, they're not going to say anything about that. They will just know, well, this is a person with a mental illness. Yeah, I understand. Don't, they don't say anything about it. All they do is when they report to anybody that needs to know, is she appeared lucid. That's all they'll say. They're not going to say, oh, well, she had a fake pregnancy, so we need to arrest her. No, they're not, they're not going to do that. But, but if she was pregnant, they might say, I think maybe you could use some medical attention. Aren't you pregnant? Like as if they're, they weren't aware until they saw her. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I, I have a hard time believing that the cops can just look at a person and determine if they're really pregnant or not. Well, maybe if the, the belt is obvious in the back of her. Yeah, and I posted my community page, uh, page a few days ago. There's the Unborn Victims of Violence Act of 2004, which is a United States law that recognizes an embryo or fetus in utero as a legal victim if they yeah, are injured yeah. or killed during the commission of any of over 60 listed federal crimes of violence. The bill contains the alternate title of Lacey and Connor's Law after the California mother, Lacey Peterson and fetus Connor, whose deaths were widely publicized during the later stages of the congressional debate on the bill in 2003 and four. Husband Scott Peterson was convicted of double homicide. And I'm sure that can also apply to her. Alex um, Jones thinks he knows everything. Hmm? Alex Sleeping Jones says she doesn't have schizophrenia. She's deliberately evil. But people with Maybe he knows her more than deliberately evil too. So there's a lot of people out there who know her better. Like I don't know. I mean, do we do we really know? But I don't know. I just find it like I feel like we're closer to like just being able to breathe a little bit better. Cause like I said, if I knew for sure she wasn't pregnant, I wouldn't give her a second look. She knows what she has to do, or is it really my business at that point? But because she's supposedly pregnant and threatening to snap the neck, to do these horrible things once it's born. Yeah, you got my attention. You got so, my attention. Uh, when she was talking to the cop on the phone, she, when he mentioned that she had to take care of those warrants, I actually saw one tear fall out of her eyeball. I mean, literally yeah. roll down her cheek. Only one. And that, and that's because she is scared. That's not tears of, oh, what will happen to me and my baby? That's a tear of, they're going to find out. And, you know, this could be the end of it. You know, if I, yeah. what are they going to do? That's what it is. Exactly. It's like throwing in a, a tear gas canister into into someone's house to you know to finally get them out you know and I think her her world is getting smaller it's getting smaller and um, you know good for her for finding out that she has a warrant though you know well, I think she was wishful thinking that. In her mind, she just wanted it to go away and she wanted to call and think she could talk her way out of it. Because that's all it was, was her telling this officer, you know, about her, men her mental health history, what happened to her as a kid, you know. So clearly she was trying to talk her way out of not having to turn herself into the warrant. Right. But her. think about it. What, what do you actually have to do to get rid of a warrant? You have to move to another country. You have no, to no. There's, I looked it up. There was a guy that was served his warrant 42 years later. Right. There, I'm just saying there's more than one way to get rid of a warrant. Um, right. We live in Las Vegas. Once a year, they 
have a, it's kind of like a job fair, but it's a warrant fair where you can go in and be pardoned from all your warrants. As long as they're not felonies, obviously. Right. But you have to stand in this line and there's probably two, 3,000 people in the lineup and they just, you know, forgive everyone their warrants. Wow. Yeah, they do that because they arrest people for jaywalking here. So there's going to be a lot of warrants out for a lot yeah. of things. Yeah. So I'm just saying that she's like worried about something that's not something that she should worry about. They're not going to put her in jail unless it's a felony. Right? The only time, the, I, I think as right far as jail, on. she'll have to go through the booking process, okay? And maybe be in a holding cell until... They're give her a pregnancy test. Huh? And they're not going to have her change her clothes so that they discover that she's not pregnant. Do you understand? Like, she's worried about stuff that she doesn't need to... She, she really should just deal with the warrant. The cop is right. And it'll, it, it will probably go away unless she can prove that he, she was raped. If she wasn't, if she, she isn't really pregnant, then she can't really prove anything. In her mind, she thinks that's proof. It's not proof, but it would be worse if she wasn't pregnant right now. Right, and it's a misdemeanor. She's not going to go to jail as far right. as a sentence. It's a fine. Under a misdemeanor, unless it's a subsequent you know, unless she's done it before, then it turns into filing a police report. Second offense is a felony. Right. In the state of Arkansas. So, you know, who knows? If they take her vehicle, she'll be up. Yeah, Shit's Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's paid off or not, they'll impound her vehicle unless she can find a place to store it. Um, and she'll have to incur, uh, incur the cost of storage for having your vehicle impounded. Even for a day, it's a couple hundred bucks. Well, she can easily get money. She acts like she can't get money. She gets money online all the time. Yeah, well, YouTube, she's, uh, she's in YouTube jail right now. Yeah, but she's on... She's on uh, Facebook, so her followers, you know. Oh, you can donate her. on Facebook. Can you donate on? Uh, can you donate on Facebook? She's well. She can tell what her um, cash app and her PayPal is. Yeah. Isn't that how she's getting money right now? Like uh, yeah, for her weed. Yeah. Yep. Someone donated her a hundred and thirty dollars. I don't even know if that person's in this chat, but so she could get to her OB appointment. Yeah, Cause she was crying about that. You know, she was out of state and didn't have the money for gas. This woman sent her $130. Well, TC comes on the next day, didn't go to the appointment and had weed on her. She blew right. the money right. on, on weed. The person donating may think that she has a mental illness and that she needs to self-medicate with marijuana because marijuana smokers believe that it cures a lot of things. I don't believe that, but People that smoke it. Oh no, the person who donated the 130 did not want it to go to weed. Leticia said she needed money to get to her appointment. Well, that, that she gave her money for lie. gas and food. That was a lie. Yeah. I, I, she said I she's like behind that. three car payments. Right. And then there's other people that say that who've known her longer who have said that her car. It has been paid off. But either way, her car will be impounded. Right. Here's the thing. Um, I think most people are watching her just to see if there is a baby. I don't think they're watching because they're worried about the baby because she does keep a healthy diet. And like I said, a lot of marijuana smokers don't believe it harms anybody, including a fetus. I don't mm -hmm. agree, but, you know, that's just my opinion. My opinion is really kind of, we don't know. I mean, there haven't been conclusive studies. Right. I, so I it's better to be safe it. than sorry. Yeah. Yeah. They followed some, they've had some data on it where they followed 
these kids after they were born and they found that they had a lot of social mental uh, or mental issues in social settings and you know but there's really nothing conclusive right but it's better to be safe and sorry and just not smoke it while you're pregnant right or take edibles because it's you know the um, i guess the amount of actual nicotine that you get from it is very little compared to the thc right i have no idea i just know that, that, that there is nicotine in in weed but i don't i don't know what the ratios are yeah evelyn I, same really here hi evelyn yeah like i said if if <laughs> if there wasn't a baby in the picture I mean, I would feel bad for the woman and hope with anyone, you know, that they get their life together, but it wouldn't be someone I would watch on you. I just want to laugh. Yeah. I want to laugh for a second at Alma. She says, Dory works for the FBI and Pink is so chill and relaxed. Do you know, Alma, how many phone calls a day I get from MRB? It's, I have, I, I'm at her beck and call. It's wait a minute wait a minute are you talking mummy ramblings well i work for the fbi you didn't know that she calls you well i work for the fbi she has me on speed dial but no for real is she calling you <laughs> no oh i'm so gullible she just said i really i'm so almost confused. said dory works for the fbi so i said that i have a large file on my on mummy ramblings because she calls oh. me every day three times a day Oh, I get it. Okay. Yeah, it I'm a, a little delayed in that it was area. a poorly worded joke. No, Sorry. it's not. You could have worded it perfectly. And th This is me. I asked my family. Pink doesn't get jokes right away. I'm a little delayed, but then eventually, you know, I have to process it first. Kind of takes time to absorb jokes, and uh, then I get it. Yeah. Hello, be smiley. Thanks for being here, Beth. Hi, everyone. I wonder why I'm having trouble with this mic. I, I, I think I'm next time I go live or on panel, I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in. It may have something to do with some drivers or something. That's what I'm thinking because I've mm -hmm. never. It just started the last week or so. This yeah, night. you sound fine here. What's up, Pink Lady? Nothing. What's up with you, Smiley? Been lurking while working. Well, thanks for being here. Well, there's the scoop on Leticia. Um, the best case scenario is. I don't know why when when. For those who have called the police, and especially when I called and they, they went to her vehicle, I mean, they followed up with me. I should have asked them, like, um, Which but I wasn't right? familiar with the warrant thing. You'd think they'd run her plate, you know, but apparently not, because, or that she had a warrant. But I watch too many uh, cop movies, I guess, you know. They could have just, they just went up to her to ask her if she's okay, you know? She yeah. said, I'm fine, and they left. Yeah, they don't run more than everyone. Be Smiley was timed out. How come? Why'd you time him out? <laughs> it was a mistake. Okay. You're moving around in bed. Oh, God. How do you get him back? Any mod can bring him back. All right, can we bring him back? Come back. Come back, Jack. <laughs> Bossy Bish. Hello. And then, you know, we all know about Shanny. You know, Shanny for Christ. Or now Shanny needs Yeah, that's the other one Shani. I don't watch, but I like to listen to people talk about. Yeah, oh, now I'm just like, oh, God. You know, like, did it even happen? Like, because if Jason's getting bailed out and he's coming back home, 
it doesn't make sense because conditions of bail are probably you can't be around your victim. So if he's coming home, then this is all bullshit. Yeah. yeah. And she's using mental health, like, you know, excusing him assaulting a, a minor a child. Well, he needs help. And my kids agree with that. Like, no, Shani, no, no. Your kids are terrified of him. You don't want him back. I just, you know, the codependency of some people. I don't get it. But I'm trying not to go down that rabbit hole with her. I kind of think she probably doesn't want to talk to her kids about any of this stuff. No, no. She said the other day she was glad that her parents died. You know, Shandy's parents died within like three months of each other. Not too long ago either. Is that why you have all that money? No, that was Jace, Jason, uh, which they call him Rev on YouTube. Right, right. That was his mother's inheritance. He was willed that, $700,000. Right. They blew through it in like three, four years. They blew That's through it. That's very common when you have um, kids that maybe have, let's say, uh, a drug addiction or addictive behavior or mental illnesses. It's very common that when you pass away, if you have left them anything, it will go be gone as quickly as possible because they, they don't know how to deal with money or things on their own. No, they blew it on. They'd buy everything. Shani, Shani was, you know, buying everything. And they had this, I think it was an expensive townhouse they were living in in Colorado. But they got evicted. The place was a mess. I mean, it was just... Yeah, he yeah. deserted them to buy a, a nice little house somewhere, did it? Or invest. Yeah, they just wanted a lifestyle. Yeah, a house would be a great idea, you know? But there's no way they could, the way they blew through that money, they would have lost the house because they probably couldn't afford the taxes on it. Right. They paid the taxes. Um you know, they could have invested, lived off, lived off the, the dividends of whatever, you know, they, they could have done so much, but it's too late. It's too late. Especially Life happenings. Right Hello. Former codependent won't throw stones. I get it. I'll be right back. All right. I get, get my lunch. Yeah. Shani sets, you know, uh, woman back in the kitchen back 50 years ago whatever you know she uh it, it's sad that you know she's not empowering in that way that a woman you know can have a career and take care of their kids alone and um and work hard no she only sets the woman back in the kitchen pregnant and barefoot How's everything life happenings? How's life? Hi, Amy Jane. I literally had one sip of alcohol when I was pregnant. Uh, hold on. That's my daughter. Hold on. I got to take this call. Hi, mommy's on a live stream. Yeah. Because I didn't know if it was important or not. Okay, I'll look at it. I'm almost done with the live stream. I'll look at it when I'm done, okay? All right, bye, honey. Have fun. Okay. Let me go up the coordinate. This is over to the train. I know you're busy doing your ride. No, I'm almost done. You want you want to ride? And it's like we trained in an hour. Just last night's plan, I don't know. She wants to see you. All right, I'll drive you. All right, yeah. It's, 
So, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll drive you. Yeah. Hi. So, um, a lot of cheese has been sliding off of crackers lately. A lot of what? A lot of cheese has been sliding off of crackers. Oh. I um, I started thinking about that, and I was thinking if, if it, if it's so difficult for my brain to think of a solution for these things, I'm I'm thinking there's probably some untruth involved, or not the whole story. So that's that's where I'm getting this from. If I have to think that hard to find mm -hmm. a solution to simple problem, yeah, like a pregnancy and. Uh, mentally ill person then there's probably more to it than what oh, i know absolutely 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 and what a rabbit hole it's been you know it's like and i often question are we all being punked can you hear me too yeah can you hear me are you chewing too? Huh? Are you chewing too? No. I don't tend to eat during live streams. I try not to. I try right. not to. Um, she and I have Bible time every Saturday and we chat. Yeah, so hi, Amy Jane again. Welcome back, Be Smiley. Sorry about that. So, so uh, the good the good news is so in about three months if she is truly pregnant you know it's all going to come to uh, an end of a chapter you know um, I don't foresee her I mean she's had all this time for two years being homeless and she hasn't tried to get into housing or she says she has but it wasn't accommodating enough there's always something that you know. Um, so do you think, do you think she's going to wait until after she has this so-called baby to turn herself in for the warrant, which could be like a really long wait if she's not pregnant? Or do you think she's going to, if we don't hear from her for a week or two that she's dealing with her warrant? I have no idea. It's a good question. I don't know. I'm hoping she just turns herself in before the birth. If there is back to, if she's really pregnant, today's my, if, if she's really pregnant day, tomorrow might be like, she's pregnant. You know, I mean, I know she did one video where she's like, watch, watch, because the baby was kicking and she had her hand over part of her abdomen. You see, you see I saw nothing. And anyone can put your hand on there and just, move your hand a little bit to make it twitch right you know lift your shirt up or put it put a piece of you know yeah, a glass the on it or something so when the baby moves you actually see something moving. Huh? when when the baby is moving you can usually see a hand or a foot moving across the belly yeah it's, yeah especially when you're yeah like maybe seventh month or um you know, but I'm still not convinced. I'm just not convinced she's pregnant. The same here. But I'm also like, part of me says she is, but I am not 100% convinced. If I'm wrong, I don't think the baby's in danger, honestly. I hope not. I, I hope the baby's going to be okay. If all she's done, she's done is smoke marijuana, I think the baby will probably be okay. Oh, physically, yeah, I think the baby will be fine. Physically, um, health healthy, but as far as staying with Leticia, I mean, she's already naming it after her her rapist. You know, Thomas raped her, Jason raped her, and she's picking the last name that begins with the S, as in Sam, because her father assaulted her. Right, so this is where the so story she wants the baby to have all these the names. So the yeah. PTSD story doesn't it doesn't work for me. I mean, she may have some, but you would think that she wouldn't want she wouldn't want to name her baby after 
people that disturb her. Right. And then that's, that's where she gets me really upset. A lot of people get upset. Like she's doing this. She's like punishing the baby, you know, when it's not the baby's fault. Well, it's not uh-huh. true, except for the fact that she's pregnant. It's not going to punish the baby. And I hope if the baby, I think the baby, if there is a baby, it'll be relinquished. And I really hope, you know, that the history that follows the baby, like non-identifying information or the story behind it is not one of assault. Because that child, I've known adoptees who have found out that they um, were products of, of, a, of a rape. And it's tough. It's tough mm-hmm. to find that out. So I'm hoping the truth goes with that baby, you know, um, that this was just a baby born out of wedlock, that it was not a product of uh, an assault. Um, a story to protect herself from having to explain the way she behaves. Right. And let's hope it's not an open adoption. You know, well, yeah. As opposed to a closed adoption, where you know the birth mother has right, you know, once a year they get a picture, or that that that's no, no. I don't, you know, even if it was an open adoption, I don't think she would visit much. Of course she would. Are you kidding? Why? Look how she went to her ex husband's house banging the door, you know, demanding. That might have been just one time, ever. No, it takes one time. Did you imagine if your kid's there and and they witness that? Yeah, that's your biological mother. I mean, that's- Well, I'm thinking the kid wasn't there because he probably went to the kid's school first. And they, they probably have paperwork saying that she's not allowed to see the kid. Yeah, but that's no way to have to live either, you know? You know, with the fear that, you know, your birth mother could just show up regardless of what rules are in place. That doesn't mean she'll follow them, you know. And as an adoptee myself, I don't think, you know, at, at being a young child, I'm pretty sure that would traumatize me. If my biological mother just showed up, you know. Um, well, my one of my children's. Not as a child. Fathers Not as a child. Used to go to the elementary school when he was in the first grade, and he would go there at either recess or lunch so that he could catch him outside. And I don't think he even knew that was his dad, but he would go and he'd pick up all the kids, like he knew them all. Yeah. Yep, Joan. Joan says, I think the whole thing is a scam. What little I've seen of it smells of a purely evil person who is out for herself and funding her lifestyle. Yes. Yes. I, I, I can. There are days I believe that. Mm hmm. That's how I feel. There are days I believe that she's not as mentally ill as she says she is. I think she's very smart, articulate. Um, I'm not a mental health expert, but I don't see anything that, that I could sit there and say, yeah, I see bipolar or I see, I just don't see it. Um, yeah, she's very monochromatic, isn't she? Yeah. You know, if she doesn't get donations, you know, she starts with, well, I'm just going to prostitute myself or jump off at their third floor story of a mall. You know? Like, what? What? She's very manipulative. Yeah, she is psycho. I see evil. Yeah, bossy bitch. Yeah, so today is going to be like, I, I just think she's evil day. Like MRB, she's out for drama. 
and I believe she has accomplished this. Yep, Joan, I agree. No, she's not dumb, be smiley, not at all. What's she yeah, eating 15, yeah. 15, $20 salads for? What's up with that? You're homeless and you just spend this money on, on a salad and you eat like four or five times a day? That's when I thought, I don't even think she's homeless. I think she just goes in her car and sets it up because there's no way with the heat, the elements, whether it's cold temperatures or hot, that she can survive in this, in a car. To buy the elements. No way. There's just no way. You would die. You would fry to death in 100 degree plus temperatures in the car. The only thing I believe right now with 100% certainty is that she has a warrant out for her arrest. It's the only thing I can believe right now. The only thing. Well, only because there's a cop on the other end of the phone. Right, right. That was the most tangible thing I could grab onto in this whole charade. And look at the face she gave. When she when she didn't like, get what she wanted to hear, the look that could kill. She could get a little cooler at Dollar General to hold cold foods, right? She doesn't even have a little cooler. That's suspicious. How is she keeping her food, you know, from going from perishing? Spends a lot of times in gyms, yeah. She's something else. She's something else. But, all right, listen, I have to go. I've got to bring my one of my kids to the train station. Okay. Let's teach uh, Teresa you still married. Jari, thanks for coming up, as always. Chat, everyone in chat, later. thanks for coming. Um, Thanks for being here. I think she has taken a playbook from MRB. I really don't see any difference unless we're right there. We, with her, we really don't know, so I'm not a believer. That is true, Joan. Yeah. I think Leticia wants us to believe, and I, I we could all be getting punked, you know, because most of us, if not all of us right here, we're good people. I would hope so, right? Um, so we're going to think at times, well, just maybe she really, you know, um, because that's that's our nature, you know, and we want to help people, right? But it's odd when you think about it. She refuses resources. She refuses everything, everything. It's like, how can this possibly be? So you're choosing to be homeless if that's the case. It doesn't make sense. But yet she complains about it. But yet she doesn't do anything about it. There's no cause and reaction. You know what I mean? It's just like, nope, nope, nope. Well, then you must have a home. You must have a home that you're going to. And you're not doing anything. You're pregnant. And you're just sitting there and doing nothing. And you're buying a couple of clothes. That's a good one. A couple of 97 cent baby clothes from Old Navy to show us. To try to convince us a little bit more there's really a baby. Not believing it. Not today. Not today. Tomorrow, who knows? <laughs> Not today. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, and her family has offered to help. Yeah. Yeah, she's refusing everybody. Everything. Everything. Except donations. Those so she'll take. So it could be the biggest scam in a long time that we've seen on YouTube. Okay. All right. Good night, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you again for coming. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. Hi, Word Salad. Take care, too. Thank you for coming. All right. We'll see you soon. All right. Have a great night, everyone.